to the Pink Pelican. I'm Angie Clute. Today's episode is on how to survive those holiday parties in style. So you get that invitation in the mail and at first you're so excited. Oh, it's going to be a fabulous party. And then you think um, that dreaded, oh my gosh, what am I going to wear? Um, do I need to have a hostess gift? What if there's not going to be anybody there that I know? How am I going to start a conversation, keep a conversation going? So after this video, you will have all the basics down. But remember, there is one key concept, and that is confidence. Everything that you do and say needs to be rooted in confidence, from what you wear, to your hair and makeup, to your conversation starters, all have to do with confidence. So what about that dress code? So you've gotten the invitation, and hopefully the invitation will have what the dress code is expected to be. Um, and if it doesn't have that dress code on there, you may call the hostess if you know her well and ask her what she expects for her guests to, uh, to be wearing. Otherwise, you can ask somebody that may have been at that party the previous year and what everybody wore at that party. Um, and uh, if all else fails, you can just wear a fabulous little black dress that may be in color and go with that. Um, now, what to wear? Um, should you wear something that you already have? We feel at the Pink Pelican that you should already have some fabulous dresses in your wardrobe. The reason for that is because those can be your go-to dresses in case you have something that's coming up fairly quickly and you can't do alterations. And, uh, and it also gives you that confidence, too, to know you have a fabulous dress in the, in the closet and you don't have to go rush out and get something and may not be happy with it. So let's look at the dresses that are in your closet already. Um, Lily Pulitzer has the most fabulous holiday dresses. One reason is because it has great style. They never go out of style. So you can have something in your closet for many years and you know that you can pick that out and you can wear it. So let's talk about that. Um, some people say that you should not wear the same dress twice. We, uh, we agree and disagree with that. You should not wear the same dress to the same, same function um, that you did the previous year. Uh, you shouldn't wear the same dress to a, a function that you've been to recently where the same people are going to be there. So how do you know, how can you keep track of that? One thing that we suggest is a little hang tag on your hanger. So go ahead and get that dress dry clean, put it back in your closet, and then put a little hang tag on that dress that says when you wore it, um, where you wore it, um, who was there at that occasion, so that way you can be prepared for, for the next time. All right, so what if you do need a new dress? That is always the most fun thing to do, is go shopping for a new dress. At the Pink Pelican, our most fabulous dresses um, are, of course, from Lily Pulitzer. Lily Pulitzer makes the most fabulous holiday dresses because, as we said, they're in style, that will stay in style forever. Now, one reason that we like um, Lily Pulitzer holiday dresses is because it gets you noticed, and it's also a conversation uh, starter. Um, and you know that you always look great in a Lily Pulitzer dress. So let's look at some different dresses. Here we have a strapless dress. Again, we're talking about, about confidence. A strapless dress looks good on a lot of different people. Now, if you are, um, if you're afraid to wear a strapless dress because of, of it coming down, make sure it's well fit. If it's well fit, then it's not going to come down. Also look for stays in the dress. The stays are those little bony things that are inside a dress. And as long as it fits, that's going to help keep it up. Um, if you are unsure of a strapless dress, just try on a few and see. You may be surprised. If you're not confident with a, with a strapless dress, don't wear it. You can always put on a wrap as well. That wrap, uh, these are cashmere wraps and are perfect for getting you to the party. And uh, we have a long dress here. One of the tricks is to find what you like the most about your body, what features, and then accent those. The, the, um, the features of your body that you don't like as well, then, uh, then you can camouflage those. Let's look at some of these dresses for camouflaging. <clears throat> this one will camouflage um, a little tummy. This one is also great if, it, if, uh, if you're pregnant. You can still wear this and then wear it after the pregnancy as well. Love this dress. It hides a lot of faults. The same thing with this too, it hides some faults. If your legs aren't your best feature, you may want to wear a long dress. Um, a halter style always elongates and uh, makes you look uh, fabulous because of uh, the elongation, making you appear taller. This one, this is the Kiki dress. 
this is going to be one of the, the best dresses for the holiday season. It does have those shoulder straps. We do have a uh, strapless version as well. Um, and this gold lame on here is perfect. Here is a, uh, a little key and um, key to your heart necklace from Lily Pulitzer. We've seen this before. That's a great little conversation starter as well. Love the one shoulder dress. One shoulder dress looks great on a lot of different body styles and it's a conversation starter too because of the blazing sirens or the mermaids on this dress. The Seamus dress is great too. If you would like to disguise your arms, then this has the sleeves, but it is very sheer. It's a great dress. A lot of these dresses too you can wear year round. So that way you can have some dresses in your closet and look fabulous no matter what day of the year it is. Now on to hair and makeup. So you picked out the dress, you've had it altered, it looks fabulous on you, you have great confidence in wearing that dress. Now what about your hair and makeup? Um, in order for you to, uh, to feel your most confident, um, pick which one you would rather do. Do your hair and makeup yourself or you can go and have it done the day of the event. If you're going to have it done the day of the event, make sure you make your appointment well in advance, especially if it's an event that a lot of people are going to be attending. Now. Um, now, if you're going to have your hair and makeup done, make sure you've had it done from those, um, from those artists before and you're confident with that as well. Um, so how should you do your hair? Um, I'd say once you have your dress already picked out, that's when you decide what your hairstyle should be. Look at the dress and determine um, what hairstyle will be best for that dress. For a strapless dress, I think um, it's really beautiful and elegant if you have your hair up in like a French twist. Um, and, uh, and it depends on how you're most confident with your hair as well. If you're not as confident having it done up, if you're going to be doing a lot of dancing, um, if you haven't had that hairstylist do your hair up in a French twist before, you may not be as confident in keeping it up all night. So in that case, wear it down. Your makeup, again, it will be uh, depending upon the dress. Um, if it's a simple dress, do your, do your makeup a little bit more bold. Um, if it's for a New Year's Eve party, do it a little bit more bold. If it is a bold dress already, you may want to play down the makeup a little bit. Maybe play up one area, maybe a bright lipstick, maybe um, bolder eyes, smoky eyes, that kind of thing. But whatever you do, remember just to do it in confidence. All right, so your dress is picked out, you've had it altered, you've decided on your hair and makeup, and now you um, now now your attention is uh, focused now on your hostess gift. So should you give a hostess gift? It's always a nice treat for the hostess to get a little gift as a thank you. Um, how much should you spend? Well, it depends on the hostess, how big and elaborate the party is, and that kind of thing. But you should not be very extravagant in that gift. Something small and, um, and really cute is always a great idea. Um, when all else fails, of course, a bottle of wine is good. Um, however, a bottle of wine, in my opinion, is, um, is kind of a personal thing with that hostess. Um, sometimes she may like a specific kind of wine. Um, also, with a bottle of wine, don't expect for it to be open at the party because she's already made her plans um, as to what wine she's going to be using. So, uh, with that being said, what else is a, is a great uh, hostess gift? Well, at the Pink Pelican, we have great hostess gifts. One of my favorites is a cocktail shaker from Lily Pulitzer. This is, uh, there's a couple of different uh, styles with that. And, um, and of course, that is a lot of style when you give this, uh, this cute little cocktail shaker. This one has the monkeys shaking the little cocktails. Um, also with hostess gifts, sometimes someone may give them a, a candle for a hostess gift, um, and that is great. What about some matches, some really cool matches to go with that candle? These are Lily Pulitzer Strike It Hot Matches. They're a longer match, which, great, which is great for lighting your candle. And then these are a fireplace match, which is really, really a great idea when you're going to a holiday party, like a Christmas party, um, and they, they do have a fireplace. That's a very nice touch. So whatever you do for hostess gifts, uh, it needs to be um, something that's personal for that, for that uh, person, but don't expect for it to be used that night. All right, your dress is picked out. You know what hair and makeup that you're going to do. And uh, so you have your hostess gift in hand. Now comes the party and mingling. Um, so you go to the party and um, 
and you find your hostess and you of course thank her, make it sincere, but make it quick. The hostess, um, her job is to make sure that other people are mingling, making sure things are getting done and you have um, you know, plenty of food and, and, uh, and drink and such. But thank her, but be sincere and be, uh, be quick and, uh, and then go and mingle. Now, um, one trick is to make sure you have a crutch. What is a crutch? Sometimes I use my husband as a crutch, uh, that way he's right there with me, and uh, sometimes it's more you have more confidence when you have somebody else there with you, making some conversations and such. But he should be free to go and start his own conversations with other people as well. So what else should you use as a crutch? Um, a crutch, you can use a drink glass, or you can use an hors d'oeuvre plate. Trick though, don't do both. If you have full hands, how are you gonna shake someone's hand? You're gonna be fumbling around with it, so only do one. And which hand should you keep it in? You should keep it in your left hand. The reason is because then you want your right hand to be able to greet that person and to shake their hand. Uh, make sure it's only halfway filled. There's a trick to that. Or if you have a plate, make sure you only have a few pieces on there. Number one, you're not there to eat anyway. Just have a few pieces on your plate. Something that is going to be a uh, small um, finger food, maybe some nuts, things like that. And don't pack your mouth full, of course. You just want a little bit um, to be social. Now, with that crutch, let's say you're in a conversation, and it could be an inappropriate conversation, or it could be one that's been going on too long, and you need something to, um, to divert so that you can um, go and mingle with some other folks. So what you can do is, you have your half glass, or your partial plate, you can use that crutch then and say, oh, I need to have another drink. Oh, pardon me. Make sure you give them a nice um, uh, compliment before you go. It was a pleasure talking with you. Um, oh, and I, I see somebody else I need to say hello to. I haven't seen them in a while. Those are all crutches that you can use. Now, um, what about conversation starters? Conversation um, continuing ideas. The best thing that you can do at a party is to talk about that other person. If you're talking to another person, who is the most important person to that person is themselves. Um, that's just how it is. So in order to, to um, start a conversation with someone, pay them a compliment. Um, oh, that's a fabulous dress. Where did you get it? Oh, I got it at the Pink Pelican. Fabulous. Um, oh, that's a great piece of jewelry. Um, and, then, and then go on to Ask questions about that person. Oh, do you live here? Oh, you don't live here. Where are you from? Um, do you have children? Find things to have that person talk about themselves. Um, and if you do that, that will keep the conversation going. And you know what? In the morning, they're going to think that you are the most interesting person in the room. All right, the party is ending. You um, greet your, uh, your hostess and make sure you tell that hostess how great of a time that you had. And then you leave the party and the next day write a thank you to that hostess and let her know how fabulous that the party was and how grateful you were to be invited. And she'll invite you back the next year. Get that, dry, that dress dry clean, put it in your closet, make sure you have that hang tag on it that says where and when you wore it and who was there. So then that fabulous dress in your, in your wardrobe then you can use again at another time. So, thank you so much for joining us here at the Pink Pelican at the corner of Airport in Whitesburg in Huntsville, Alabama, and online at thepinkpelican.com.